All right. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get into some screen stuff. So uh, what I'm gonna do, uh, the first like big chunk of this is about game planning screens. I'm gonna kind of just whip through that real quick, but I will let you guys know. So if you're uh, if you listen to the Run the Power podcast or if you've ever done any of their stuff, I did the presentation for their upcoming. Uh, summit that's coming up it's going to be at the end of the month so that'll go a lot more in depth it's like a 90 minute presentation so that'll do a lot of the game plan but it's the same thing we're going to kind of breeze through that to make sure that we get to a lot of clips to show you guys uh, so real quick just about us you know uh, this is my first year at Franklin very good program 103 and 20 in the last 10 years been to at least state quarterfinals for the last seven years straight uh, eight out of the last ten Two state runner-ups two years ago. We lost to Muskego the past couple years in the playoffs. Obviously, they've won the state title. So uh, I think this year, if our quarterback hadn't torn his MCL, we probably would have beat him, but that's how it goes. Uh, and we won our conference seven of the last 10 years. Uh, offensively, we are, uh, for the most part, a spread to throw team. We line up in a lot of different personnel packages, formations. I don't know what do we <laughs> We probably have almost. Know, 10 personnel packages that we use. Yeah. A lot of formations, um, all the way from five wide empty to 22 personnel. We'll line up, we'll bring some defensive end. We had a, a stud again this year. We brought over and played him at a little fullback. Um, he's going to play at Wyoming. So we throw him in there. We're lucky we had two really good tight ends, with uh, both 6'5, you know, 230 pounds, around 4'6, 40, so we're blessed to have stuff like that. Um, Pretty limited run scheme. We're probably what 75, 80 percent inside zone. Uh, 60 close inside zone probably. Okay. We run inside a lot of zone, outside zone. Yeah, we run a lot of tags off of our inside zone game. Run a little bit of counter. Um, not a huge gap scheme team, and then we do run a decent amount of draw. And some of our screens that we're going to go through are built off of uh, our draw. Yeah. Um, for us, our draws and screens are very similar for the offensive line, which makes it easy for us to teach and coach and get reps. Uh, we block them a lot. Very similar for both of them. And then we do have a very diverse passing game. So we'll line, you know, we go three step, five step, boots, naked, sprint out, just about anything that you can imagine we have, we probably have in our passing game. Um, we do, you know, a lot of the same stuff that coaches just up here going over, we do all that stuff. Um, and then we get pretty, we have some pretty advanced stuff because we're, we're lucky to have a lot of really good, talented receivers and quarterbacks. We have a very good youth program, so they learn a lot of that stuff from like second grade. So they're, they're very good at that when they show up day one. And then we have a, a real large screen and draw package, um, which is going to be the bulk of what we're doing here today. Um, so I'm going to read through some of this stuff. So philosophy of it, you know, it, screen cells are not just an accessory in our offense. They're something that we spend a lot of time on and that we really believe in running all the time. We want to be able to run them on any down and distance out of any personnel package formation. It's not just something that we think, you know, okay, we got to have a screen here. Like that's, that's not how we look at it. That, they're a big part of what we do. Um, and very important to us, just because, mostly because we throw the ball so much. They're really built off for our passing game. A uh, great way to get the ball to our studs and space, and you'll see like some of our tight end screens. You know, when you got a six foot five, two hundred and thirty pound tight end who runs a four six forty, you got to get him the ball. Um, and you'll see how, how we do some of that stuff. Protects our passing game, and then we use them a little bit. You know, some are to take advantage of an aggressive defense, some take advantage of passive defenses. You know, a lot of our draw stuff. Uh, three big keys that we talk about, and Coach will talk a lot about the timing. That's a huge thing for our alignment. Uh, landmarks, the guys that they're blocking. You know, he, uh, he spends time on that what every day, probably. Every day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we spend time on in our run game, our backfield segment of practice every day. Quarterbacks and running backs. We go through our screens and footwork and timing every single day. And then the big thing for me, I, I coach your quarterbacks is. Quarter, teach your quarterbacks how to use their eyes to hold and move defenders. That's something that I talk about with those guys a lot. And <coughs> give us some good examples and some not so good examples when we, once we get into the film here. Um, okay, so kind of a breakdown of how the screens are grouped. Um, in the families, we have our off tackle screens. Uh, these would be like running back slip screen from our backfield, a wide receiver tunnel screen that goes to our outside most receiver. A throwback screen, which can be off of our sprint out, or a boot, or play action. And then we have our swing screen. Middle screens would be our 
ones that are off a of draw, shovel and angle screens, they're all blocked just like draw. And then our jailbreak is just like tunnel screen, but ran to an interior inside receiver. And then perimeter screens, you know, we run kind of all that stuff. I, I don't <coughs> technically classify them as screens. Like in, in the offense, they fall kind of between runs and run and screen as what I call constraint plays because you could attach these as RPOs, screen pass options, that kind of stuff. All right, a little bit about the game planning. So uh, you, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of R4, R4 system, Doug Maddox and those guys. Okay, so I, I use his system for game planning. Um, we don't use it for the passing game, which is kind of what he originally became known for. Um, so we, I, I look at what's called CAP, so coverage, alignment, personnel. So coverage is essentially the depth over DBs or receivers. <coughs> alignment is where they are horizontally. And then P is personnel, so how good are they? You check that out. Um, and the way that they kind of break down is the families are based off of what players we're looking to attack or we're to take advantage of. So our off tackle screens would be designed to attack a pin player, which would be is just the R four way of saying force player. So this could be defensive end, outside linebacker, possibly a safety if it's like a four two five team into the boundary. Our middle screens are, are designed, or, and then also pursuit players, which would be a backside linebacker. Okay, the guys that are going to flip over the top, so like a throwback screen to take advantage of that guy. Middle would be attack your penetrate and plug player, so penetrate would be interior defensive lineman, and then your plug player would be play side linebacker. And then perimeter screens, you know, kind of like what Coach is talking up here, really to take advantage of a, a pin player, okay, force guy, alley defender, which we, we, we RPO. Um, and then to take advantage of any structural personnel deficiency out there on the edge. Uh, and then the second part of game planning, uh, tendency wise, I look at field zone and down and distance. Those are the two big things for us. Um, you know, we had, we played Kenosha Indian Trail this year. What was that, week four? Yep. Something like that. Okay, and they had never shown, you know, they were very passive, just kind of sat back and played their base defense. They showed up to play us, and all of a sudden it was like they were just throwing heat <coughs> all night long, and we were not prepared for it. And uh, we still we won the game, fortunately, because our defense shut them down. Uh, but we didn't we didn't do a great job. When we played them again in the playoffs, we had a plan for it, and we ended up beating them. It was I think it was forty five to nothing at halftime or something in round two of the playoffs. Just that we knew you know we had a good plan for it. We took advantage of. We broke down by field zone, down in distance. We knew exactly what they were going to run and when they were going to do it. We, we were calling, we have our tight ends coach is a great sign stealer, so if you ever play against this, you know, it would be smart for him. <laughs> uh, and we, I mean, we had them down. We, we were calling, the, we knew what blitzes they were come, bringing, bringing interior pressure. We were rolling out, getting away from it, and we, we just we kicked their ass on it. So. <clears throat> so, what we do is uh, it gets entered in the huddle. We break it down, we do some tendency reports. I'll show you kind of what that looks like real quick so we can get into some film. So this just shows like how, who's putting what in. So O-line coach, front stunts. Here's kind of what they look like. It's all broken down, what we call them. Now if you're an R4 guy, you've seen this stuff before probably. Running back coach does blitzes and pressure. So I just differentiate blitz and pressure would be, pressure is, one defender coming from the second level, blitz would be two or more. That is kind of what that looks like. Just, uh, you know, there's, again, these things kind of fall into family groups similar to like how we break the screens down. Things, strong side, we just say A, B, C, D, weak, one, two, three, four, and then the outside guys have names. Field zone, so we break it down blue, backed up, goal line to the 10, yellow 11, 49, green, Middle of the field, red, red zone, gold is goal line. Down in distance, so these are, uh, I like to talk about these ones. A couple down in distances that you may not have thought about in the past to take a look at when you're doing a breakdown. Uh, my favorite one is that top one right there, first and 10 after converting a third or fourth down. So we had, in, in our league, uh, Kenosha Bradford, they had a D coordinator a few years ago who, without fail, every time you converted a third or a fourth down, he was bringing this one specific linebacker in a blitz every single time. Super huge tendency, and we killed him with the screen game that night. So yeah, I don't know what it was. If he was getting pissed that we kept converting on him, or what, but we figured that out. Third down, 
we convert immediately to the screen. Let's go. And we scored, I think we scored three touchdowns on the screen in one game against them. Uh, another one, second and short. You know, offensively, I think, you know, typically you're thinking second and short, we're going to take a shot here. Okay, so depending on how defenses defend that, another good time to try and call a screen. And then another good one, if you're a, a, a team that throws the ball a lot, especially if you want to throw on first down, second and 10 after you throw an incomplete pass. Uh, in my, over the years, I've found that most defensive coordinators are almost 100% on second and 10, either bringing pressure or just sitting back in coverage, like playing real soft. So that's another good time to figure that out. Like, if they're bringing a lot of pressure, okay, we'll screen, they want to sit back, draw. Okay, good second and 10 plays. And at third short, obviously teams want to kind of cram the box and try to mash it up in there if you're going to run, you know, your power team or whatever. Another time to maybe screen. Coach, is there a way you would do that, like on huddle, like categorize that? Yep. Um, so the first and ten after converting, or the second and ten, what I would do is I just have I would have a column that's just a yes or a no, and then I know, you know, you just look at it as you're going in and breaking down. If it was a second and ten, or if it's a first and ten, you can be passed. Then I would say yes, and then I just filter it by all those yeses. So it makes it pretty easy, real quick. Just because you, you, you can create your own custom columns in there. Like a lot of my so like if you go back and look at it, what some of these look like. A lot of these are cut. They might be hard to see what they are, but uh, like we have hash yard line field zone. That's a custom one. Um, what else is on there? Offense formation, motion, offensive play, tag, type. A lot of those are custom ones for me. Um, the type one, I don't like how Huddle does that. Like you can only do, I think, run, pad, run, pass, or screen. I don't even know if screen is in there. So I create a custom one that's you know run, pass, RPO, play action, pass, screen, pass option, all that stuff. So that we we can filter by that. Um, and then we would break down like offensive play would be. Know, the concept, so I'd say inside zone, <coughs> smash, curl, four verticals, whatever. And then there's another column for tag that would be specific to how we would call it. So that way you can filter by concept. And you should yeah. break that down by positions, like the running back does the uh, blitz to the right, or uh, uh, one person do all that. As far as who's inputting this stuff? Yeah. Yeah, so it would be broken out. Like I highlighted on there kind of where the running backs coach would fill those in, pressure blitz, you know, line coach would do these two. So like for me, I would do essentially all the way from personnel through type. Okay, because that way I know like the language of what we call it is always the same. Receiver coach would do coverage, our tight end coach does basically all the basic info. Yeah, the columns are really, it's very easy to input those custom columns, like a yes or a no. I, I like doing that, it's very, you know, you just, if it's a first and 10, Incomplete pass, just hit yes. If it's a third down or a fourth down conversion, same thing. I'll do that. Very easy to filter it. <coughs> and that's something, I mean, I, I could be more than happy to show you guys, but like, I know we're doing the chalk talk kind of. If you guys want to see how that works, I can do that. Uh, real quick, this is uh, what one of the tendency reports about field zone would look like. So this is the uh, Indian Trail playoff game. Um, so bullets. <laughs> I used to coach at Indian Trail, so I know all of their terminology, too, which helps. So this is actually, and I, and I stole a lot of the terminology that they use when I kind of when I made my defensive ID system. So like bullets, blitz is a double B gap blitz. Ammo would be double A gap. X just means they're crossing those two inside linebackers. Um, so you can see, but I mean, based on this, as you're looking through, like. Bullets shows up on there a ton, and they, that's what they did against us. They were bringing a ton of interior pressure, just trying to just overload us in the middle. So we <clears throat> did a really good job of screaming, drawing, rolling out that night against them. Here's a down and distance one. So they blitzed a ton on <coughs> 10. Okay, so that's one of those situations too, like when this popped up, you know, I would go back and see a good time to hit that yes or no column. Okay, where a lot of these blitzes after converting a third or a fourth down. Because that's going to help you figure out do I want to screen them on first and ten. Okay. All right, so a little into the X's and O's here. So first one is just our basic running back screen. Yeah, I'm sure everybody runs this. 
The only thing that we probably do a little bit differently is, uh, and, and you can probably talk about it here, is we don't necessarily teach uh, first guy outs kicking like sidewalk, second guy's alley. You teach guys. Right. We actually have personnel we're going to go get. Like our place that guard is going to the number one defender. Doesn't matter whether it's a safety corner or whatever, that's your guy. So we're not just running to space, we're running to personnel. So that we can we can match up and make sure with our receivers going one end, so our X and Z here are going one end, we know we're not worried about those guys. They're out of the picture. Our place at guard is going to number one, which gives him landmarks, which gets us playing a little bit faster. Yeah, so the idea here, like, like Coach said, is our, our receivers are going to go one inside their man, okay, try to seal off inside. Now, these are very important blocks. I know sometimes it's hard to get your receivers to block. You know, Evan, our receiver coach here, does a great job with it. The key to this is you got to make sure that those guys get on that outside shoulder and not underneath so that that guy can flip over the top. And you'll see some clips on here, uh, quite a few of them actually, where that that's the case. So if they're not able to get that outside shoulder secured, you know, at a 90 degree angle here, you know, and they, a lot of times our guys get here, and then he flips over the top and makes a tackle. Because what the idea is, okay, Z is coming down into the inside backer. <coughs> our X is coming to that Sam or Nickel guy. Our first guy out, like Coach said, is getting number one. Second guy out, our center, his he's trying to get out right off the block of the number one receiver. Okay, up to get number two. Yeah, we want to get him out in the alley. Yeah. And we tell our place our guard, he's running to his upfield shoulder of number one. That's your landmark. Just chase his upfield shoulder. Make him be wrong, or, or make our our running back. He knows where you're running. Now we can play off of that. Uh, so one thing that you will see, I think the first clip. What happens here too is it's against Indian Trail. Now the corner chases inside. Okay. Now and you'll see that our our first the guard coming out recognizes it because the corner goes in, safety flips over the top, he picks up the safety. Okay, so he recognizes that number one changed. Okay, and that takes a lot of reps. Okay, to get good at, but it's very doable. And then your third guy out is what do you call him? The cleaner. He he just cleans up. Yeah. Okay, kind of what some guys call a rat killer. Okay, so <coughs> come down flat down the line, turn it back inside to seal off any backside pursuit. Okay, and, and like I had mentioned earlier, kind of the guys that were trying to attack with these plays. I, I, know it's, I mentioned pin and pursuit players for our off tackle. So you can see there, it might be hard to see, they're highlighted in blue, the letters are blue, so the end and that mic back around the backside, those are really the two guys in this family that we're looking to take advantage of. So if that end is a real hard charger upfield, boom, this is a good, a good screen for that. All right, Indian Trail. So, this was round two of the playoffs. Um, this kid, the, the corner down here, okay, uh, pretty good player, very physical, and probably our best receiver matched up on him here. But we, what you'll see happen is, as we go down one inside, he's going to follow the safety on the bottom. The boundary safety is going to flip over the top. And our guard is able to go out there and pick it up. <coughs> and when this happens too. What are you teaching them to go block him, right? Because if he goes with, right? Okay. So if this corner goes with Elliot, our receiver down here, number six, if he recognizes that, hopefully he will, to try to block that guy, the corner going with him. Okay, so you can see corner goes inside. Safety over here is going to flip over the top. We want our guard coming out flat down the line of scrimmage. Is there a timing key? Thousand one thousand for our linemen. We want to sell pass. We want linebackers to drop, open hips, and drop. So in our screen game and draw game, it's the same kind of thing. As soon as you see them open their hips, or you hear them yell pass, go get them. That's where we're going to leave. Okay. So you can see now that the guard here is going to come out. Like Coach said, flat. Now, this guy went with, the safety's coming over the top. Okay. So you can see our receiver here, not a great job of getting around the outside shoulder. Okay. Ideally, that's what we would like for him to do is get around there. Now, the safety's coming over top. You can see our guard leading right here. 
Okay, does a good job picking that up. Okay, decent play on first down. Okay, so here's a yeah. Sorry, this is probably still from when I did the, the run the power video. So that's yeah, essentially what it would look like from this angle here. Where are your coaching points for the running back on this slip screen here, coach? Is he pivoting out, pivoting in? Nope, stepping up, get inside hip of the tap. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of the same same idea of timing wise with the old lineman. So uh, again, like I mentioned, you know, we QBs and running backs, I take them every day for a, a backfield session, and we work on this every day, like the timing of it every single day. Now what I'll do is I'll stand there where the tag and I'll, and I'll, I'll be facing them on the right back, but I just tell them, okay, here on the tackle, you come up here, you know, he does his set, and then. Get out there, find that. We, we tell them two by two off of where the tackle would be. It's kind of that spot we wanted to catch the ball. Do you have a preference on the pivot? Open inside shoulder, outside shoulder? Uh, right air. I, I'm not sure exactly what a running back coach teaches them. I, I personally don't really have a preference on it. But. So he's 1,000, 1,000. 1,000, 1,000 for the lineman. Yep. Yeah. And the running back? Running back saying as soon as he sees the lineman release, he's going to go. If you see that guard go, you can see that it kind of simultaneously took off there. In our lineman, we, I teach you set away from the defender. You're only going to block half of them. We never want to square a guy up. We never want to stone a guy in the line of scrimmage. Just set away one hand only. Okay, so you can see our guard out here does a good job. Now, the, and the number one here is the corner who chased inside. 54 is our center, 64 is the backside guard. Oh. Getting all the way out. Yeah, our backside guard here got a little. I mean, he gets there, but he tech, really we don't want him out there. We want him cleaning up inside. Mm -hmm. There are some good clips of uh, of him going right around that here. I'm not going to be able to see. So I think if, if, if we gotten that corner blocked up, this probably would have been much better played than it would be. But what's the tech uh, easy space this car keys on? <laughs> Say that again, keys. Your, what, yeah, what are, you, what are your tech keys in space? Uh, Play side you, guard? Yeah, anybody in space over there. You're, you're always attacking upfield shoulder, okay. is what we tell them. Always attack his upfield shoulder. So our, run, our receivers, our running backs know he's always going to run to his upfield shoulder. I'm going to play off of that. Because <laughs> if we try to square him up, what happens? That's a little guy, a big guy blocking a little guy. We're going to lose. I mean, we're not, we're not as athletic as those guys. So run to his upfield shoulder and just stay on that track. Does it matter if that uh, play side D tackles a three or a one technique? Does it impact how they? No. Force not it? to us it doesn't because we're always going to set away. So if it's a three tech, I'm going to set inside and let him run. <coughs> it. Now our running back has to adjust to a three tech in a one tech. One tech's different. I'm going to set out. Now he's got more space. You push him into the ground. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. In our set, I mean, we're basically going to center and guard are going to do this and let him run. Okay. Uh, quick one here out of three by one. Just a. Uh, Again, highlight the, some of the receiver responsibilities. So they're always going one inside. Okay, so we should be coming all the way down. Number one out here is the guy we're kicking with the guard. Safety is all the way in the middle of the field. So that would be where our center would be going to. So this is a pretty. I mean, ball's on the 14 yard line. We're on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, any down distance anywhere on the field. So that's a pretty good job blocking outside here by the receivers. Guard is out to. Running back, be patient, let your guard work. That's a good job here by the running back. Okay, our center gets hung up here. I think this is on the camp or something. There's not a couple out here. Yeah. 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 So our center ends up getting hung up because the linebacker, we're not able to get the backside guard out because of the, our tackle whiffing on it. I don't teach cut blocks. I don't know why he's doing that. Where do you want to catch the ball, Coach? What's your landmark there? Uh, we tell them the landmark is two by two off of where the tackle is. Okay, here's a nice job of running back being patient, letting his guard get out there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Kind of see where he's going. Figure out the slow mo on this. So he's a little. That's a little wide here. Yeah, I'm a little quick too. Okay, good job slowing down, being patient here. Guard does a great job. Coach, coaching points for that fat slow DN who doesn't even recognize the screen. We don't play side. Play side? Yeah. yeah we tell good. our tackles, our play side tackle, 
he's your guy. If he doesn't rush, we're, we're, it becomes a run block to us. Yeah. Now we got to go get him. We got to move him. We can't have him sitting there. He's either <coughs> upfield or he, we're taking him down to the ball. Uh, he just cannot be there. Okay, so this one, this is Receiver Park. So this was our uh, coach in the last session talked about how Catholic Memorial played the three safety defense against him. So we saw that once this year too, which is a little a weird. We weren't overly prepared for this. We had an idea. They kind of ran it the first few weeks as more of a package deal, and they ran it the whole game against us. So we were not expecting that. So it kind of messed up some of our responsibilities here, and we didn't. I don't, I don't even know if we ever talked about our screen game against this during the week, but just to kind of go over how it would look. Go back here. Okay, so what ends up happening is that the outside linebacker up top. So it's kind of a the way that they were aligned is like a three-three, kind of a three-three-three look, and the two outside <coughs> linebackers in the box were broken outside, so it was like a three-one box. Okay, so a four-man box. Now, most guys would say, like, holy, holy crap, a four-man box, you better run the ball. It's actually not an easy defense to run against because both of those ends are in four eyes. So what they're doing is they're pinching inside, spilling everything to those outside linebackers, and they got this safety in the middle of the field essentially as another free player. They're, they're playing a cover two, cover two shell on us. They're playing, you know, corners are on the flats, two safeties dropping deep, and then they have those three guys underneath. Well. We had no way to get to that middle safety a lot of the time. He was kind of wreaked havoc on us. But the way that this would have worked um, is we're still going to, the rules would maintain, stay the same. However, the outside backer up on top comes on a blitz. So that the way that it would have adjusted is our number two receiver should come down to that mic. The outside receiver would come all the way to that middle safety in the middle of the field. Um, what he does here is I think he, that kid was all over the place all night. And I think our receiver probably got a little confused and didn't know where to go. So he starts going at him, you'll see, and then he peels back and goes for the corner, and this middle safety ends up coming all the way over. So you can see him, look, he's looking, that kid's bouncing, he probably thought, okay, there's no way this guy's gonna make the tackle, I'm gonna stop, go with these guys out here, when in reality that's our guards guy to go get, and then our center pulling off of the number two. You see guards coming off flat. Yeah. And again, we teach our linemen, if, if you wanna blitz us with a screen or a draw, on a screen, you blitz from off, we're going to let you go. We're not even going to touch it. We're not going to touch a guy that's blitzing from off. We see a lot of short side alley pressure. We'll let those, just let them run. They'll run themselves right out of the play most of the time. Yep. Okay. Um, so look, from the end zone, so you, I mean, as you can see it, you know, right now, if you're looking at this, you're thinking, holy crap, run the ball. But again, like I said, not as easy as it seems. So it's, it's essentially what Iowa State is doing right now. And I know their coaches, went down to Iowa State for spring ball last year, and I'm sure that's where they learned it. So the edge pressure comes off here. Guard is flat. Okay, that receiver should not be there. He should be inside. Okay, our center's a little slow getting out here. Oh, here, here's a good one. So, to highlight the importance of the receiver block coming down inside, I, I, I did. I highlighted this one on the uh, <coughs> for the run the power one. Is so, Coach Bradford had these two linebackers that were like, I think they were cousins. Yeah. Uh, Trey Glass and something. But the one kid was just an absolute yeah. badass. And our receiver here does not do a very good job of blocking him coming down, and he absolutely demolishes the running back here. So, good one, good one. Making a business decision. Yeah, so you can see number seven right here on the left side. Our receiver is right to the right of him, went right by him. And so, good way to highlight the importance of the receivers. Uh, yeah, this is a good one to show. Okay, the. We talked about the backside guard cleaning up, or rat kill. So this is a good one to see that here. This is against Kimberly in the state title game in 16. So our backside guard, basically, we tell him, you get to the play side tackle, you get vertical. That's, yeah. as, that's as wide as we want. So you can see him here, he, right in the middle. He's going to pass off this D lineman, get around that linebacker right there, right in the middle, <coughs> and seals him off. That's, that's a very good example of what that should look like. And what we were 
were talking about this last night, right? Who's this? Uh, the number two is not very good, right? Center. Yeah. yeah, and you can see the motion, too, the defense kind of moves a little bit. The receivers do a good job here of adjusting, so they still come down one inside. Okay, you can see that slot receiver. He recognized, okay, this guy's coming inside, but I know he's not my guy, so he keeps going right by him. That's a great job. Okay, you should be able to see the, the backside guard here. No, this is not a great job by our play side guard. We don't. He should not even really be engaging this this defensive end. Set away from him. Set inside. He gets caught out. Now his shoulders are turned. It just kind of slows him down a little bit. He can he can be out there a little quicker. There's a good view of the guard, the backside guard on number 45, <clears throat> sealing him off from the backside. All right. Okay. Next one, uh, tunnel screen. Okay, so we run this. We'll run it both too. Uh, and as I mentioned before, uh, the outside receiver, and then we run it as uh, we just call it jailbreak screen to our inside guy as well. They're blocked the exact same way. Um, timing's just different. Yeah, timing's a little different. This one's a little bit slower because they've received some longer throw out there. Um, the way it's going to go, so. Probably the same as anybody who runs this on the outside. That outside receiver is going to take three, one, two, three, boom. Back behind the line of scrimmage. Number two is going to push kick on the guy over top of him. Play side tackle. Uh, you want to talk the technique on that? Yeah, play side tackle. We call it slam release. He's going to pass set. Make sure he takes away the inside. Only engage with your outside hand. And then we're up to the force player up there. And again, coming out as flat as we need to come out, it's easy to get upfield, you can never come back and get them. It's kind of the way we, we talk to him. So stay flat as long as you can. Now we'll go up and we're going to get to his inside shoulder. Uh, play side guard again. Same. It's kind of like our screen we just saw. Pass that set away. Let him go. Okay. Now you're just going to get vertical again on the, on, the, on the willow in this case. Center, you're uncovered. You're cleaning up. So you're going to turn back and get... When somebody tries to retrace, you're in their face. That's what we want to do with him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, a three tech would set away from him, so our left guard here would set wide, let him get upfield. Now we're going to go cover the mic up. As soon as he opens his hips, he yells pass, sees pass, drops, go get him. And it's just hit, stick, and run. Doesn't matter where you take him. Try to get to his inside shoulder. If you can't, just cover him up. All right, let our athlete make a play. Yeah, so one good uh, teaching point for your receivers, too, is, you know, the idea here is you're, you're going to get the kick out with the play side tackle on the force guy. That block by the guard on the will linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of where you want your receiver to put his eyes, okay, as he's coming in. Because what can happen here is this play can end up hitting in two different spots. So if we get this sealed off right here, he's going to hit it here. If this guy flows over the top and we seal him out, then it's going to hit further back in here. Okay, so make sure that you teach your receivers to get your eyes to that middle linebacker so that he doesn't just blindly run in there and get smoked or set a lineman up for failure. Uh, backfield, we always swing away with the running back, and the quarterback is going to throw this in on rhythm timing. So this is not a, you know, get back here, boom, boom, and then throw. What we're doing is it's a three-step, okay, so he's going to take it. On his first step, it's eyes to the swing, okay? As he crosses over now, he's going to start to swing his shoulders back, and as soon as step three hits, it's out right now, okay? Coach, do you have any sort of general rules of thumb against the tight front where you're going to see that zero and two four eyes in terms of releasing and who releases and all that? Um, <coughs> yes, it's going to change. Our play side tackle is always going to do what he does. Okay. Okay, that doesn't change for him. Our guard now, would, our play side guard would stay in the state, and now we'll send our center to the well. We'll just flip those guys, <coughs> and, you know, mess around there. So odd front, even front changes what we're doing up front, which is what we always need to recognize from. So yeah, it will change for us. Can, can you explain what that means again? Sorry, I didn't If we're throwing screen this way, I'm going to set away from my defender. So based on where he's aligned, if I have a three tech, I'm the guard and I have a three tech, I'm going to set in. 
I'm going to give him <coughs> an alley to run. I, we don't want those guys standing on the line of scrimmage. Okay? Give him an alley to run. They're defensive players. Oh, I can go sack the quarterback. They're going to run. Don't ever square them up. They're only going to play half their body inside one hand only. So, screen's going right. I'm setting inside. I'm going to let him go. He's inside me. I'm going to set out and let him go. I'm going to always set away from the defender. Away from the defender. Okay. I didn't know if it was away from the ball. No, nope, away from the defender. Right, because we want those guys upfield. We want them running. So, uh, so the left guard, the, the three techniques outside of him. He's, he's, he's going to stay on him, and now we're going to release our tackle. That can change. You'll see some right. after that's different. Because this is an even front, so it's different than an on. Okay? Our, our left guard here is going to stay on a three tech. He's just going to widen him, widen him, widen him, get him upfield, and let him run. Set inside, okay? Let him get upfield, and then just attack and widen. Oh, so he's supposed to set inside. Because yes. he says set away. That's what confused me. Set away from the defender. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Defender's yeah. outside, I'm going to set away, I'm going to set inside. <laughs> Away from okay. Away from the defender. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Because we want those guys upfield. What we don't want with kill screens is defensive linemen yeah. standing on the line of scrimmage. We need them upfield. Okay. Hey, back. Yo. How do you treat an even tag? You got to head up. Gonna, yeah. Say you're gonna say you see a two tag. If, if if you're head up on me and we're going right, I'm gonna set wide and I'm gonna give you the inside. We always want to set to the screen and that's. In that situation, okay. Uh, a couple of clips of this. So this one, we we don't run this one a ton. And, and one other quick coaching point is uh, with the receivers, and you're going to see a lot on these is they they don't like to continue to carry this inside for whatever reason. Okay, they typically will they go up, they go back, they catch the ball, they stop and cut vertical. That happens a lot. And you'll see that most of these. That's what ends up happening here. So this is just run out of a bunch. Again, because it's thrown behind the line of scrimmage, we can get downfield. <coughs> We're going to time this up, and you can see we're already headed downfield. The ball is just coming out of his hand. So you can see tackle coming out here to kick that force player. <coughs> yeah, he should take this further inside. Yeah, so this is one. You, you can see now the receiver is going to cut this <coughs> one up here, right? <coughs> What's going to happen is see big 71 our tackle coming out he's coming to kick this guy so it should hit back inside of here now our receiver cuts it up too early see right now so he cuts it up outside of him but look if he had kept going inside you can get see the wall the set there right get inside that yeah. tackle yep. you have a pretty good wall set so this would have been a much better play and you watch the tackle <laughs> heavy, stay square outside hand on Get him upfield, and I'll release him. Okay, so you, I, you can kind of see here how it should work out. Okay, tackle's going to set, release out to that outside linebacker, force guy. Guard's going to set back. He should, this, this right, this left guard here should set wide, so he should set to his left. Guys, head up inside, set outside on him. Let him run up the field. Yeah, and then as I said, that block by the guard, that's the key that your receiver has to get his eyes to to, to determine where that play is going to hit, whether it's outside of him or inside of him. <coughs> so the arrows are drawn there just to highlight that. The center's going to peel back, and then that tackle is going to set up to the backside linebacker here. Okay, again, to highlight where the play should hit. If he hits it behind that tackle, it's a pretty good play. Right, because now we got angles of linemen yep. when they're chasing the ball. Okay, again, now, one thing with this, again, like I talked about, a key on your screens is your quarterback using his eyes. This one is a good example of a not very good job by your quarterback. He's a little quick to get rid of this. Now, again, this is Indian Trail in the playoffs, so they're bringing a ton of heat, so I'm sure he was, our quarterback's a sophomore, he's very, very, very talented, very good quarterback, but a little jumpy sometimes. Okay, so he got rid of the ball a little too fast. He didn't do a good job of getting his eyes and selling that swing around long enough. But again, he had pressure right in his face. See better coming. Coach Beck, do you have any scary teaching with uh, draw in the tunnel screen? Tons. Our screens and draws, we Identical. are very, very similar. 
it might be different for one guy, usually, which is what allows us to have multiple screens and draws because they're all pretty yeah. much blocked. Okay, screen. the uh, the last couple ones on here, the, the shovel screen and the angle screen are based blocked off of our draw. Right, that's our draw block. Yeah. So you can see again now, quarterback, you, you can see very plain that he's not even looking at that swing. Right, that's not a very good job. Okay, this is a better job of the receiver getting inside. Yeah, you, get, you have your guard, your tackle out there. He just doesn't use it. Yeah. Yeah, it gets inside at one. <coughs> Big Chad gets the pancake here. I can't remember where they pressed up. Yeah, they play pretty tight on the outside. Yeah. So they're, they're, I mean, they have uh, some pretty talented kids on the back end. So they're not afraid to man. They'll, they'll man us up. Yeah. And in our conference, because we run a lot of screens and draws, they're looking for it. So yeah. you know they're. Okay. Now the throwback screen. Okay. So there's a couple different variations off of this one. Okay. Now we can run this <coughs> off of uh, either a sprint out. Okay. Which will sell quick sprint protection up front. We can run off of our boot game and throw it back. And then we'll do it off of, you'll see some of the last clips, we kind of layer some things. We layer a jet sweep, plus fake inside zone, roll the quarterback, and then throw it back. There's a lot of different things that we can do with it. Um, Technique-wise, receiver, essentially the exact same thing as we just went through with the tunnel screen, okay, uh, that outside guy. Quarterbacks and running backs in the backfield, like I said, still in quick sprint. Quarterback, what I teach is five steps, okay, get out there, one, two, three, four, five, set, find your guy, throw it, okay. And, and the key is, it can be a little iffy sometimes if you have a quarterback that's not used to doing these things. You got to make sure that he doesn't just turn and launch it up there. Okay, make sure he finds that receiver first. Okay, and then place that tackle, place that guard. Again, it's the same kind of thing we've just been doing. So it's just different guys. So here are, you can see our left tackle is going to the corner because our our sprint action is going to take that mic and let him run, and we'll get him with the guard now instead of the tackle. Now we can get our tackle out there on the corner in space. Those right, and you'll yeah. see they will flow. If you run sprint stuff here, that's why this is such a great play. If you run sprint out stuff, those backside guys are going to run. Yeah, and the, so again, back to kind of talking about the different families of screens. Now this is where we're getting into more of the taking advantage of that really aggressive pursuit player, which would be the backside linebacker on the backside. Does he have the option to throw him to Z? To the front? Yeah. Uh, we, we haven't done that yet, but we could. You know, I mean, that's something I've done in the past. We don't currently do it right now. But yeah, you could do that if you have it out there. Okay, so this is, this is against Mosquito from last year in the playoffs. So this is a good look now. Because we do run sprint out a decent amount. Okay, whenever we had our back set strong to trips, okay, they were flipping their alley backer from the boundary to the trip side and they were covering down on all three of our receivers. Okay. So if, and if you're an RPO team, Okay, back set the trips is a very common RPO formation. A lot of teams will cover down on all three guys, right? So this was a perfect play for this situation as they flipped everybody to that side. Now we're going to roll a quick sprint to the trips, throw it down here. That's how it should look. Okay, our guard doesn't end up getting out, but it's set up really, really well. Okay, there you see our guard gets too engaged yep. in terms of shoulders. <coughs> if that, he's able to get up to that linebacker, we probably have to right. play now. Probably not out running 24 on the back there, but would have been a good play. What are you teaching on that wide out again? Just jam up field almost like Yes, yeah, exact same as a tunnel screen. screen tunnel, tunnel screen. screen, three steps up, come back, find my screen. Yeah. Okay, so there from the back view is what it should look like. Up. You see the technique by the tackle there. You can see the left guard here. This is when he was a junior or senior. He was he was an all state kid. Quarterback's a little quick. So yeah. A little ones. quick. Yeah, it's a little quick. We like to set it up a little bit more. So, what was the coaching points for the tackle in there? We teach our tackle set inside, <coughs> like our sprint game. We call it step hinge. Step inside, take away the inside, let him run. One hand only, outside hand. Get it on him, which opens your shoulders to where you're going. So you're going to step here, and now I'm, I got my eyes where I'm going. Guard, you need to change uh, yeah, that's what we want to do with our guard as well. You can see here he doesn't do that. 
Yeah. Right? He, should, he, should, he should not be down on the nose guard. He shouldn't even be touching it. Any chamber the forefront where that guy is kind of declared outside and tends to stay outside a little bit more, like, like that defensive end? Uh, for us, be, they are always coming upfield because they, they they know we spread out. We do that, so we see a lot of pressure off the edges is where they want to come to us, which helps for this play. It helps for our sprint draws, which we run off of that. You can see our tackle here. You hear this kid, uh, who is oh. Yeah, he's a little slow getting out. Should have been a little bit faster. So yeah, again, if we hadn't been able to get to this backside back, we probably right. have a piece of Right. Team. I mean, right. Our, it's because our guard commits yeah, to the nose guard. We probably have to outrun Wooler, but that was a You're still getting in positive yards. You get, you get an athlete in space. That could have been a big thing. Uh, here's another variation of this. Now this is going to be thrown to our tight end. Okay, so we talked about having the the really big stud tight end. Um, Brett, he's going to play at Illinois State next year. So it's just a little bit different now what you're doing with the tackle, right? Right. Now our tackle, if you watch here, it's a little bit different on what he's going to do because there is really isn't a the corner slash force player is the same kid. He's just in a different position. So now we can try to get him hooked instead of trying to kick him out because he's so tight. Yeah, we're trying to get him hooked here, trying to pin him inside. Kind of overcommits and gets too far upfield. That's enough, though. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, he got enough of them. But again, it's body position more so than, than making a great block. Just get your body in the right position. Yeah, so instead of kicking here, we're going we're gonna, to we get him hooked because by alignment, he's giving us that. Mm -hmm. And you watch his first steps when we, we do the roll, he's, he's going inside. He's, he's rolling with us. Okay, not great technique by the quarterback here. <laughs> not close to that. <laughs> yeah, it looks right. cool. And, and the tight end lets the tackle go first. Yep. Have you had to tell that come across on that at all? I know it's not exactly the protection you typically have, but would he leak out and come back to the weak side on that and throw back? Oh, uh, yeah. He, so he'll step outside, and then he's looking back in for anything coming off the backside. But have you thrown anything back to the Back on the oh, here, here, here. Yes, Pete. That's here the other go. one. <laughs> so here you go, right here. Okay, so this is off of the loop game now. So we, we did it. There's a couple different versions of this here as well. There's this one, and then there's one when we run out of our, like, squeeze two-by-two two set. Okay. So the only difference really up front here now is we're going to, instead of the quick sprint protection, it's boot protection. We pull the guard and everything. Quarterback's going to fake, roll out, set up. Okay, the backside receivers are going to run off, and they do a good job on this, the, the clip that we have here. The tackle, it's essentially the same technique the coach just talked about with that tight end version of the screen. Okay, the only thing here is, you know, we're, again, we're not going to have the guard coming out. Right, but with the guard pulling, it should take that linebacker with it. Yep. So we don't, we, we don't really need to get him out there. Yeah, this, this play worked out pretty Yeah, this is a really good play. A really good play. Okay, so again, this is uh, Kenosha Bradford. So number seven, the stud linebacker that I talked about before is down here. Uh, playing in the alley over number two. So this, I'm going to let it roll so you guys can see. So that's the guy right here. So this is really good job by the whole line here. Yeah. This play, I mean, the time that we have. Yes, ball's thrown behind the line of scrimmage. So they can go down. Well, so yeah, that can be down there. <laughs> but, well, you can see now. The nice thing about this they guy. They were and we actually picked it up. The side, it up. Yeah, the side guy throws a flag on this. Fortunately, the back judge is standing right there on the line of scrimmage and overruled them. You can see the ball is caught behind the line. I mean, he, there he throws the flag right there. It is right. See it? No, I'd like our tackle to go find the guy here. I mean, he eventually gets to him, but ten minutes go. Okay. See, you can see our tackle setting inside, right? He ends up throwing him inside because the guy wants to go inside. Throw him inside. Yeah, you can see out here. I mean, they got nobody out here, right? Right. And you can see that tackle looking inside. Now, go get this kid. <laughs> uh, whoa. The tackle's pretty good, too. <laughs> All right, here's uh, the, out of the squeeze stuff. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to fake a jet sweep. Fake jet. Fake inside zone. Roll. And then throw back to the running back. So we stole this. Uh, if you watch the LA Rams the last two years, right? This, that's where we stole it from. Okay, same idea as what they do. No, we can't go over there. So. Yeah. <laughs> fake, fake. 
Again, now here, quarterback, not a great job selling. Okay. Could have kept going. Right? Because you can see the guy over our tackle up top recognizes it. So if we had kept going a couple more steps to get that guy to commit a little more, this would have been a better play. Right. That guy's gonna go inside our tackle. Yeah. And we'll tell our tackle if that guy you can't get rid of him, <clears throat> stick to him. Don't let him go because he's you know. Now he's chasing us, he's got a chance. Yeah. He really could have stuck to him now with one-on-one -on -one with your receiver and their DB. Yeah. We'll take that too. That's a good job out of that. I'm gonna show you the next one. Okay, so again, now, this is a unique trail game from the playoffs round two. Like I said, ton of pressure, bringing a ton of heat ass. And th this ends up being a really, really good play. Okay, you see they're already, they're walking those guys up into the B gaps, that bullets blitz. They, they, here they come. Okay, our tackle. Ah, come on, tackle. Yeah, this is sophomore. Good. Sophomore tackle overruns his guy. If you get it, <coughs> the other thing, my favorite part of this is if you see <laughs> our tight end is down here on the bottom of the screen. What, what, I love watching this because watch what he does here. He literally drives this kid's ass all the way to the end zone. <laughs> wow. Holy <laughs> shit. So the perks of having a really big and good tight end. So you see, if we get any, if we're able to just touch this kid, it's a pressure on. Our tackle run fun. All right, uh, swing screen. We'll do this one quick. So this is blocked up front, like uh, speed option. So yeah, this is option off. So yeah. Speed off, it's outside zone to the call, right? Um, the only thing you're going to do is release the tackle inside to try to seal off that play side linebacker. The, the biggest key to this is going to be, like I said before, is the receivers on the outside. And you'll see these, the first clip right here. Uh, we don't do a very good job blocking the alley guy up top. Okay, our two inside receivers kind of both go at him right away. And they must have thought, oh, the other guy's got him, and then they both run right by him. And we tell our tackle it's, it's a re-release based on alignment of the defensive end. Inside, outside, doesn't matter. Take your easiest release. Okay, so you can see we don't do a good job on that guy up top. He comes through. Is he able to slow it down? Sure. This defensive end lined up outside. We're going to take an inside release and then get wide. Yeah. So it's good. It's a good job too because the nice thing about this is it's like a normal outside zone. That combo between your center and guard would have to work all the way to that play side linebacker here. On this now they can work back, work back. so they can see it's much easier to seal that guy off. So what it should look like. Play side guard here. You can see inside hand only. Right. Don't engage it. Inside hand. All you do is buy time for your center to get there. That nose guard's not catching. Yeah, that's the guy, right? We gotta block that guy. And you can see our tackle even with an inside release. Um, pretty good right or uh, right tackle here. Okay, uh, the jailbreak screen. Now this this exact same blocking scheme as the tunnel screen we went through earlier. Now it just goes to an interior receiver. Offensive line. This is just quicker. This is thousand one. We're going. So there's a couple of clips on here. So we have to sell pass. It's sell pass thousand one. Don't engage. Play half a man. Let's go. Okay, this is a pretty good clip. Uh, there's there really only one one thing that goes wrong on this one, and that's the uh, the center peeling back on the nose. So he doesn't do a great job of getting all the way around him. That guy, kid kind of sticks his arm out, which our receiver sees, and ends up bouncing it all the way around the back. So otherwise, this play is blocked up real nicely. <coughs> Coach, you practice this shitty block? Do we practice it? <laughs> no. We talk about it, and it's more, for me, it's more half a man, one hand only, versus <coughs> practicing a bad block. It's just <coughs> play, with, play with one hand instead of two. So here's our, our, the tackle coming out to kick that force guy, the first guy. Got two guys yeah. getting up on inside. Yeah. The guard and center, or guard and backside guard working up to those two interior linebackers here. So this looks really good. Now you can see right in the middle, our center, number 62 right there, is doesn't do a good enough job sealing off that nose. Our receiver is going to see it here and bounce it all the way around the back side. If he'd hit it up in, been able to hit it up in there, this would have been a really good play. Yep, he has, he got them all covered up inside. Yeah, he has to bounce it around and then he gets blown up here. Defensive team was great. Yeah. <laughs>
great adjustment. I think most of you realize that. Was just a great adjustment. This has to have to be my nice son. Okay. So. Yeah. Our center just got to get his head up, up the other. Yeah. Hey, but field is a really good yeah. Looks really good so that the guard's going to come to two backside guards coming up to this backer. So you can see there's really, really good running lane here if we're able to get that Noah sealed off. No. Okay, it looks really nice. Uh, this is a good one. This one goes for a touchdown. Okay, so Oak Creek, uh, really big slant from the boundary team, bringing a lot of boundary pressure. Okay, we do, and anytime you go empty or trips, they're gonna shift their safeties like this. So we shift it here, we're gonna end up running a bubble with the running back, which is gonna pull, I think it's gonna show it here. You can see you got one, two, three defenders all chase that bubble. And it opens up a huge running lane right in the middle of the field. So you can see the tackle up on, right there in the middle of the field. The guard is up on the middle linebacker. Really good running lane, take it all the way to the house. Here's a good, now you can see the center here. This is a good good view of what kind of that peel back and seal the nose looks like. So it almost looks like you're just letting go kill your quarterback. And that's, I remember the first time Coach told me about that, I was like, eh? Huh? But it just works. Pick it up any retrace. Yeah. All right, shovel. Okay, these, not, these two are both blocked off our draw. Okay, so we run a lot of just regular draw. The blocking scheme up front doesn't change any. I know sometimes he'll release the tackles, depending on the box that we get. If we get a five-man box, it's just straight draw. Five on five. Yep. Six-man box, we'll, he'll slam release one of them. Or some of these, when it's the angle screen, you'll see the slam release both of them. But with this, so we'll, this again, we'll run to the tight end. So we'll go empty, run it to the tight end. He'll step back inside, right behind the tackle. And then he's just going to pivot open, catch the ball, and go. Okay, just like a real <coughs> draw. So again, another way to get your ball to the stud player. Okay, get it to see how he stays inside the tackle here? Okay, this is out of a double tight look. Double tight empty. Okay, he could have kept it in the middle of the field there. I'll show you a couple of running back ones. Here you go, Coach. <laughs> so here, here's a good look now, a five-man box right now. So the only problem with this one is that I will say um, the double team in the middle is almost too good. They really kick the shit out of the center on this one, and they never come off right. to the linebacker. See that the double team in the middle, they drag this kid all the way off the ball. Right, we need to get off. It's a good view of what it looks like. So quarterback, again, now, this is going to be – you know, we're, very rarely are we ever getting back stopping and doing anything. It's going to be one, two, three, set, and shovel it forward. Okay, running back, it's just like you would do at the screen, just coming back inside. All right, can you see the linebackers are reading pass, open the hips, and turn and run it? That's when we want to go cover them up. Okay, what it would look like, should look like. So you can see if we come off to that linebacker. Come off to that linebacker, we got them all covered up. Two minutes, go. Okay. You know, all we're trying to do and all we teach them up front is cover them up. Hit, stick, and run. Doesn't matter where they go, where they want to go, just stick to them and run. This is a good one. This is Kenosha you know, Tremper. Okay, so they're at 314. They bring a lot of double edge pressure here. The nice thing about it is those guys take themselves right out of the play. We don't even have to block them. All right, so we're able to get five on five in the middle. Those two guys come off the edge, we just pitch it right back up in the middle. You see those outside linebackers run right by it. Look at that. Okay? A running back is a terrible job. Yeah. <laughs> Any adjustment against that tight front? If you're going to get the double four eye. We're going to, we're, now we're going to block, we're going to stay with our guards and our tackles are going to go. Tackles are really yep. Tackles are really okay. yep. I mean, it's five on five. Mm -hmm. At that point, we say, you five got those, I figure it out. All right, now, quick. So, the angle screen. It's the same idea here. Draw, just like we did the shovel. Now the only difference is a running back is going to come out almost like a Texas route, take a couple steps, and then he's coming back inside right underneath. It's going to hit the same spot. Just a different way to get to the same thing. Okay, so like Coach was saying, it's very simple for us to install this stuff because up front nothing is any different. Right. Just the running back and the quarterback do something different. Okay, it's not a great throw here. 
Oh, and here our tackle should not come off. I don't know where he's going. You can see we got the guard there, and he kind of gets in the way more than anything else. He should just be staying out, our right tackle. Here. Okay, so they, they, it looks funny. This is actually they're a four-two-five this time this year that they just had a stand-up defensive end of the boundary. So this kid to the field is the the big DN going to Northern Illinois. He's pretty good. So this time they bring the edge pressure again. Okay, kind of like that trumper clip I showed you. So these guys can see run right by it, right? And again, you can see we're, we're playing up front. We're playing half a guy, right? We want one hand on All right, that's it. Perfect. Cool. All right, so we're going to move on now. Uh, we're going to chop.